Hello, and welcome to the Basic ECL Concepts video series. This series of short videos introduces the fundamental concepts and syntax of ECL so you can quickly start exploring ECL and the HPCC on your own. In this first video, we introduce the basic statements of ECL, definitions and actions. ECL is a language designed only to work with data, huge amounts of data, so it is all about querying and manipulating data. There is no GUI aspect to the language at all. It is a tool for doing ETL work, that's extract, transform, and load, the standard data ingest process that all data shops must deal with. And for querying into data to provide end users with their results. ECL is closely coupled with the hardware it is designed to work with, the HPCC, a massively parallel data processing platform. This hardware slash software integration provides the power of applying massive parallelism to data problems without the need for the programmer to explicitly deal with the inherent problems of parallel programming. The most common statement in ECL is the definition. This syntax diagram shows all the possible parts of a definition. The items enclosed in square brackets are optional. Each of the items will be explained by the end of this video series. Relating the syntax diagram to the example code shown, export is a scope type, boolean is a value type, is leap year is the required definition name, which will receive a single 2-byte integer parameter named year. Colon equals is the definition operator, which is always read as is defined as. This Boolean expression is the required expression for this definition. The colon delimits the end of the expression when a workflow service, in this case stored, is attached to the definition. And the semicolon is the required terminator. Here are some basics of the language. ECL is not case sensitive. Our comment delimiters are the same as in C, C++. White space is ignored by the compiler. And forward references are not allowed. ECL has a one-pass compiler, so any definition used in any other subsequent definition must have already been defined. ECL is a different kind of programming language than most in use today. It is declarative and non-procedural. So what does that mean? Here you see three lines of C code, three assignments into three variables. And at runtime, which of these three lines of code will execute first? The first, of course. And right after that, the second line executes. And then the third line executes. That's procedural coding. Do this, and then do this, and then do this. In procedural languages, the order of the statements in the source code specifies the order of execution by the computer. In other words, the programmer is telling the computer exactly what to do and exactly when to do it. Now, let's turn this into ECL code. Now what we have are three definitions. Read that as I is defined as 1, J is defined as 2, K is defined as 3. These are no longer assignments into variables. These are definitions. They define what things are. They do not specify how to do the work. There is no such thing in ECL as an assignment statement, and no such thing as a variable. And just like a dictionary where each word is defined exactly once, so is each definition defined exactly once and cannot be redefined. This is a fundamental difference between procedural languages variables and ECL definitions. So at runtime, which of these three definitions executes first? The answer is, I don't know and I don't care because it's none of my business. The job of the ECL programmer is to define what they want. It's the compiler's job to figure out how to get it done. In other words, in ECL, the programmer is never writing executable code the way they would in C or C++. They are defining what 
the end result has to be, and leaving the how of getting it done up to the system. This is the single most difficult concept in ECL to really get, and the most important to fully understand. The only ECL statements that might be construed to be executable are actions. For example, these three definitions can be put to use by using them in an expression like this. Then, we can use the most common action, output, to run the job and get the result of the expression. ECL also has a large number of built-in functions, the most common of which will be covered in a later video. The primary difference between actions and definitions is an action causes the job to execute while a definition cannot. Any job you run must have at least one action. However, an action can be used as the expression of a definition, in which case the action is no longer a direct action but an indirect action launched only by the use of the definition's name as an action. By giving the output a definition name, Notice that the code will still syntax check, but results in an error when you try to run it. But by using the definition name as an action, indirectly launches that action. This is a mechanism by which you can define actions and defer execution based on further logic to come. Conversely, any function that returns a scalar value can be used as an action, whether that function is a built-in function like this count or one that you have written yourself in ECL. Okay, let's briefly restate the things we've just gone over. One, definitions are the most common ECL code. Two, ECL is a declarative and non-procedural language. The programmer defines what the result should be and the system takes care of how to produce that result. Three, only an action can launch a job, so each job must have at least one action and may have more. This concludes this video. Thank you.